Hi everybody, I'm Colin Riddell, Colin Who Cares, Dugong Man, i got a whole lot of aliases. I started this campaign in August 2009 to highlight to Australia and to the world that dugongs and sea turtles in Australia are killed in unlimited numbers, unmonitored, there's no process at all to tell you or any, any department whatsoever how many are being killed. Everyone knows they're on the World Endangered Species list. We also know that sea turtles, are, um, some species are on the World Endangered Species list too. And it really got up my goat and I thought, well, the best way to do it is show this little compilation of exactly what the campaign's about. Bob Irwin's uh, heavily in it with me as, as our opposition members of parliament and thousands of supporters. But I think I need to show you all exactly why I'm running the campaign. Section 211, 1993 Native Title Act allows Indigenous Australians to kill 50 native animals that you're not allowed to touch. Um, they've done under native title, tradition, whatever you want to call it. But in doing that, in 1993, they gave them open slather for anybody who claims to be Indigenous to go and kill a turtle, a dugong, or any of those 50 other native animals. And that is wrong. And we have prohibitions with Japan. Numbers are allowed to kill in Wales, and we're all screaming up, up, upset. But no one's doing anything about this. So I've taken it on, and I've copped a lot of flack, but I really don't care. It needs to be fixed and addressed by the government. and also in Queensland, only state and territory in the whole of Australia, there are no cruelty provisions for Indigenous people in relation to Indigenous hunting. That means the vision you're going to see on here with turtles getting cut up alive, and the first vision there is a horrendous one that uh, was exposed to Australia back in April last year. That shows a, a sea turtle being cut up alive, and it flailed for, I think, for about three or four minutes. That's common practice. One was killed uh, very recently last Sunday in front of international tourists up here in Cairns. This is happening on a daily basis all around Australia. In the, in the areas from um, Shark Bay, Western Australia, right, right around the top of Australia, down to probably south of Townsville, Bowen, around that region. And it's unmonitored. Uh, the Queensland Government have got a, a blind or a set of shutters on saying that the, the whole dugong population lives in Moreton Bay in Brisbane. It doesn't. They go right around the coast. And everyone I speak to, and I speak to many, many people, many, many witnesses, many, many experts that have been up in these places for 10 to 12 years, they're telling me the greatest threat to the turtle and dugong is indigenous hunting. Uh, they're removing the eggs out of the nest. There are other factors, and I recognise there's wild pigs, there's boat strike, there's um, habitat destruction, there's all those things. But no one is addressing Indigenous hunting, and that's what I'm doing, and that's what the campaign's all about. So just watch through here, I'll break in every now and then and explain something to you, and um, you, then you'll have the whole package and know what I'm about and why I'm doing it. I have no background in conservation. I was a slaughterman in abattoirs for seven years, um, but I'm repairing that damage now. This is just something in Australia that needs to be addressed, and no big group as the Cajonis do anything about it. Animals Australia, fantastic. Queensland RSPCA, fantastic. Earth Race Conservation Australia, fantastic. But the rest of them, all the ones you pay money to, do nothing about it. They all blame all of the other things. But every expert that I know that's been up on the Cape or lives on the Cape or in the communities tells me the numbers they're killing them are unsustainable. 12 dugongs in one night. Jackie Jackie Creek, 40 dugongs in one night. 22 boats they're waiting for them. Wiped out the whole pod, babies and all. And they prefer the babies. They're sweeter and also there's not as much fat on them. I think they're probably actually killing themselves because the, no one's actually checked the content of the mercury and all those other things that, that go into an animal. They come through our inspection service as seafood, yet a dugong is a mammal. Why aren't they inspected as meat? They just pass through at the airports and back into here. And you'll hear from an indigenous person um, from the Amandaburra people, James Epong, who spoke to Michael Smith on 4BC. He'll clearly tell you there's a legal trade in it. I have another witness who sees 60 kilos a day, seven days a week through the Cairns Airport for seven years. The Department of Environment Resource Manager doesn't even want to talk to him. Never even rang me to ask me who he was. You know, people have got to ask all these questions about what we're doing about our own animals. The live cattle trade you just witnessed. Abhorrent. But this is as bad and it happens on your front doorstep. But the trouble is people around Australia don't know about it. We know about it here in North Queensland. A lot of people have been following me on Facebook, following Who Cares, Riddell. Um, I do look after Bob Irwin Wildlife um, on Facebook and Bob Irwin Wildlife Fund, those Facebook pages. If you go to those pages, have a look, you'll see the horrors. I've been sharing for a long time, but I need to get it out. This compilation hopefully will, will do that. So I thank you for your time. Just watch the video, and if I'm wrong, send me a message. But believe me, from all the people I talk to, I'm spot on. And these animals are going to perish if we do nothing about it. They breed like an elephant so infrequently every five to seven years. And that, we can't sustain that those numbers if we're going to wipe them out with no monitoring, no controls. And it's a the time these gutless governments stood up and said, enough's enough. Let's have a moratorium. Let's see how many's left and install a process and put the money and funding into it. Okay? Sit back, relax and enjoy. You won't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy making it and I don't enjoy doing the video. Thank you.
Here you'll hear from James Epong, member of the Mandaburra people down in Innisfail. They, they have a native toll area of about 60 k's of um, shoreline. Uh, they have a 10-year self-imposed moratorium. These people are shining lights. There are two or three others with um, moratoriums, but uh, they're, they're voluntary. And if they choose to have one, they, they can have one or they don't. Um, a big thing that happens in that native tile area is that people who have been all lobbed together in a native tile area from hundreds of k's inland come down there and kill turtles and dugongs and do not respect the olders who are sea country people. So uh, James speaks from the heart. He's a shining light and he's a friend of mine and I'm proud to say that. And uh, I wish that a lot of people would take a leaf out of his book. He is a conservationist and he's my friend. So here's James. Uh, you know, Ten years ago that um, anybody in the Indigenous or Island, the people come in to our area, they'd come and see the elder and tell them, you know, what, we, what they're going to take. They're going to take a dew gun on a turtle. And it's only for, only for funerals or weddings. Only for funerals or weddings. That's right. Yeah. And then we would take them in our boat, in our, our canoes, and go and hunt them for them and then give them to them. But now, it's, like you said, it's $50 a kilo for turtle meat. It can be up to $150 a kilo for dugon meat. And you've seen evidence of that people selling the meat? Yes, I have. And it's right down to, like, Cryvac. You know, they, they're butchered prop. You know, they're all cut up professionally and everything and packaged in Cryvac bags. So distributed all around the place and... The people that are doing, they're, they're well set up. They know the ins and outs of when when the patrols are going to be around. Yeah, you know, we've, we've put all our information down to the EPA and Garumpa on where our turtle hunting grounds are, where all congregation areas are. And I don't know if these people have got whiffed of this, this information that we've, we've given out because we don't know what's happened to it because we've, we've never received anything back from any of the government departments. Yeah, yeah so... It's very political, it's very, nobody wants to stand up and say anything. The only reason why I'm saying something... Jay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. It's, so it's you were quite, just... The, the only reason you're saying something is? I'm just trying to get a quiet area here. The only reason I'm saying something is because my elders are sick of it. Yeah. And he wanted to stop. What, what's your observation of turtle, green turtle numbers in your area? Last year recorded uh, 47, and that's with proper instruments. This year we've recorded three. So the green turtle in your part of the world is threatened. How about the dugong? Well, yeah, the dugongs are almost not, not here, not in existence. You only see one every now and then, you know, when it's perfect, perfect weather up here. Yeah. That's when you'll see one. But I, I, I go, I'm on the water twice a week. Probably up to 10 hours a week, and I, I might might be lucky to see one dugong every couple of weeks, maybe every couple of months. James, how do you feel when you see uh, people up in arms about the Japanese with whaling, and you see what's happening to Australian coast and our own beautiful animals? Well, with, with Japan, they say it's cultural. I don't know how how it goes with them. But I'm not understanding that they've only been doing it for 300 years and their technology is outclassed the whale, just the same as us. But with the whale, there seems to be a lot of money floating around. Yeah. Um, with the turtles, anybody puts their hand up and say, oh, we're going to protect the turtles, especially Indigenous people, we're left out on our own. Yeah.
the tree That you did to dream Really to come true Someday I wish upon a star And wake up where the clouds are far behind People have asked, um, you know, who have contacted to try to get national attention to this. I've contacted Greenpeace Australia. I've contacted the Women's Society, um, Senator C. with the Greens, sent thousands of emails to all of those groups. Never get a response. Uh, ACF, Women's Society, you know, they all call themselves whatever Australia, but they don't do anything about Australian animals. They, they would never touch the sensitive things. And you've got to ask yourself why any of those big groups would condone cutting up an animal live in 2011 in Australia when we're protesting against whales, um, orangutans, bears, you know, anything else that, that moves, but we just seem to dodge this because it's, it's attached to traditional hunting. And um, I've been on Indigenous Radio. I spent an hour on there taking talkback calls. I only got two calls, and uh, they they didn't um, can me. I explained to them why I'm doing it. It has nothing to do with race. It's not not a racist problem. It's to do with sustainability and cruelty. When you've got one state only that doesn't um, have any cruelty provision for cutting up an animal alive, you've got to ask yourself why. And also, you've got to ask yourself why the federal government allows any animal on endangered species list to be hunted to extinction, because that's where it's going to go. These animals, like I said earlier, they uh, breed like an elephant. The closest relative to a dugong is a relative is the, the elephant. So, you know, if they're breeding that infrequently and only have one calf and they stay on the mother for nearly two years and they suck all milk and they're a mammal, um, you know, you've got to ask why we're just allowing people to cut them up in any numbers you like. And the people I talk to tell me that they are going to be extinct within the next 10 years in Australia. And we're supposed to have the biggest population. So let's ask ourselves why, why nothing's happening. Why you have to hear it from me? Um, why don't you hear it from the groups you all pay your money to? I'd be asking them that question and why they're not getting on board. Um, a lot of people that I do contact and explain why I don't have any opposition. I've got many people that are Indigenous that, that are supporting this, but there, there are frightened voices. A lot of people get to the same stage and they get frightened off. Well, I'm not going to get frightened off, and I don't think that uh, anyone should get frightened off when you're trying to run an issue to save an animal. Because I'm not doing this, I'm not running for parliament, I'm not doing this for my own ego. It's um, just something that's wrong in Australia and we need to rectify it. We just rectify the cattle problem, but they're all moaning on TV. I'm watching that on TV now and they're trying to say everyone's going to go broke because of it. So so what if we go broke? Um, is it the expense of an animal or is it the expense of your pocket? And we're going to start thinking about the animals rather than ourselves. Uh, they're all here first or they're here as, as much as we were and I think we owe it to them to, to do something about it. And I, for one, want you to get on board, turtles and dugongs, um, and let's contact all our politicians, put the pressure on them, and let's make them fix up this anomaly in our law where we take an, another country to court for killing 900 whales, and yet we allow this unlimited, unmonitored, no process. Walk into a derm office, say, I want to kill some dugongs, they'll write you out a permit if you're Indigenous. You can just claim to be Indigenous and go and do it. You, you don't have to prove it. Just claim you're Indigenous and, you, and it happens to you. And um, that's the disgraceful part about it. That is just being hunted by people that aren't even attached to sea country. They come from Sydney, they come up for the weekend, they can go out here on the Great Barrier Reef and cut up a turtle or dugong alive in front of you, and there's nothing any legal person or any law or RSPCA can do about it. That's the disgusting part about it. So let's clean this right up, and uh, I'm leading the charge with Bob Irwin, and I hope you all get on board because uh, it needs to be fixed. 
Thanks, everybody. I hope I explained all your questions. If I haven't, send emails or read the websites, Colony Cares Riddell Facebook, Bob Earl and Wildlife Fund Facebook, Bob Earl and Wildlife Facebook, or dugong and turtles dot webs dot com forward slash. Thank you. The video taken in the Torres Strait caused public fury. It showed a green sea turtle having its limbs cut off while it was still alive. Local activist Colin Riddell says enough's enough. He's calling for a moratorium on killings. If we don't have some sort of a moratorium, how are we going to determine what's left? They're already on the endangered species list. Peter Garrett put them on the endangered species list. He put the leather back with the loggerhead on January 18, 2009. He put it on himself. He knows they're endangered. He doesn't count how many is left. North animal activist is furious at the proposed changes to the state's animal cruelty laws. The state government earlier announced it will strengthen existing legislation, creating a new offence of serious animal cruelty with a maximum of seven years imprisonment. The turtle and dugong campaigner Colin Riddell says the changes don't go far enough. He says there's still a loophole excluding animal abuse by Indigenous hunters. We've got to change these laws. It's for the animals. I, I respect Indigenous culture. I respect Indigenous people. But I don't respect anybody treating an animal hum inhumanely. Controversial animal activist Peter Bethune and conservation group Sea Shepherd will visit the far north later this month to investigate alleged dugong and turtle abuse. Okay, everybody, um, that, that's brought to the end of this um, this compilation I've done. Uh, thanks to my mate Robbie over in England. He told me to put everything together because I get asked a lot of questions every day. I spend half a day on the internet answering questions. There it all is in a nutshell. I really um, hope you'll come on board. You'll see what's happening here in Australia. You know, the shining light of conservation in the world, Australia. Ha! We're a, we're a joke. We've wiped out more species than any country on the, in, on the, on the planet. So... Uh, if there's anything else you need to know, go to YouTube. Uh, I've got a channel on there called Snrake, S-N-R-A-I-C. I, -I, -C. I uh, try to spell cans backwards, but I stuffed it up. So uh, that's it, Snrake, S-N-R-A-I-C. There's many videos in there that will upset you. There's a lot with Bob Irwin talking about a lot of animal issues and, and myself um, and all the media we've had. We've got to get this to national attention, the same as the live cattle. Um, how your people sleep down south. Um, knowing that we do the same thing up here that we're all protesting against with the cattle is beyond me. I can only uh, answer that by saying you're unaware of it, but now you're aware of it. Please get on board. Help Bob and I bring this to a, to a halt and save these species because one day when you want to all come up to Queensland and go to Port Douglas and Cairns, the Great Barrier Reef, and the day you can't see a sea turtle swimming past or a dugong, you want to look back and say, I did nothing about it. Well, I'm trying to do something about it, but I need your help. That's it. I'll uh, post uh, a caption thing on the end of it. You need to pause it to read it because it goes past so fast. Like I said, I've known Steven Spielberg. I've done my best, and uh, thanks for watching the video, and I hope I've answered a lot of your questions. Let's save these animals. I need yous.